Protect your privacy online with the best VPN for gaming, ExpressVPN. And visit expressvpn.com slash gillymaster linked in the description to find out how you can get three months free. The Compact EMP Launcher has been one of the most talked about items coming in the Contract DLC. With so many people asking for years now for a Mark II counter or a Mark II nerf, could this finally be the weapon to put an end to the noob bike meta in GTA Online? In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into some community speculation and also discuss how the EMP launcher could work and how it needs to work in order to be a counter to the Oppressor Mark II or really just be any sort of use in general. The speculation amongst the community is either that this is going to be a reskinned compact grenade launcher that instead shoots EMP grenades, or that it's going to be wildly overpowered and completely eliminate any sort of vehicle combat in GTA. I can tell you right now with 99% certainty that the second one is not going to be the case based off of some research and testing of my own. Looking at the screenshot of the newswire, the EMP launcher seems to have hit the coquette and it creates this sort of shockwave blast effect with some lightning involved. I then thought to myself, we have an EMP device in the form of a landmine already in the game. So I went to take a look at its effect in the Rockstar editor, and this is the Arena War Mine EMP effect in slow motion. If we pause it on a certain frame and put the two side by side, you can see that they utilize pretty much the exact same blast effect. From the kind of smokiness on the outside to the orange burst on the inside, and even the lightning is of the same texture and color as well. Now this doesn't necessarily confirm that the EMP launcher is going to be an exact carbon copy of the Arena War Mine in terms of the EMP effect itself and what it does to a vehicle, this simply means that they most likely use the same visual effect. In the game code, every single explosive has a VFX or visual effects tag hash name, and this line is what determines which visual effect happens when the explosion goes off. In this case, for the EMP mine, it's the exp underscore VFX tag underscore VEH mine underscore EMP. If I wanted to, I could delete this line completely and there would be no effect at all that goes off, or I could replace it with another vehicle mine effect tag, and the effect would be different, but the damage and behavior of what happens to the vehicle that gets hit will not change. It will still be an EMP mine. So even though the EMP launcher appears to use the exact same visual effect as the EMP mine, they could behave completely different. But let's pretend that the EMP launcher does in fact have the exact same stats and effects as the EMP mine does. So when you shoot a vehicle with whatever it fires, we'll talk about the projectile later, it applies the same effect as the mines do. The question becomes, would this be enough for a Mark II counter? I personally think that it would. When the Mark II gets hit by the EMP mine, it loses all of its maneuverability and acceleration for a few seconds, and if it were close enough to another player, I think it would be more than enough time to switch to another weapon to shoot the pilot off. However, the weapons still remain in effect while the vehicle is EMP'd, which I'm not really a fan of. I unfortunately can't test what happens if the Mark II is hit in the air because these are landmines so I have to be glued to the ground to get hit by them, but I would imagine it starts to slowly fall out of the sky as well. But what about if this effect was to be applied to other vehicles? Well, if you hit the RC vehicles with an EMP mine, both the Bandito and the RC tank will be disabled for a few seconds, which could prove as a good counter to RC vehicles if the launcher does work this way. But the weapons of the RC tank still remain usable, and you can still detonate the Bandito while it's EMP'd, which is less than ideal in my opinion. The interesting part is when we get to how the EMP mines affect air vehicles. Obviously, this is only for testing purposes, in no actual scenario would a jet or any sort of air vehicle get hit by a landmine, but the effect in general takes a toll on planes and jets in particular. In this test, I flew the laser into the EMP mine and it instantly lost all of its acceleration and altitude, and even started smoking after the first few hits it took. If a laser or any plane were to have this effect applied to them while the nose is tilted down, for example when going for a strafe on a ground target, since the jet loses all control, they would most likely end up crashing into the ground and dying, which I think would be hilarious. If a plane were to be hit by this when they aren't facing downward though, they would most likely recover just fine, so long as they have a decent altitude. And the jets are also able to fire their weapons when hit by the EMP, they do not get disabled. Helicopters on the other hand are actually hardly affected by the EMP mine. I use the Hunter here and even after I go over the mine, despite the effect getting put on the vehicle, I can still gain altitude and even have a good amount of control over the helicopter. And on top of that, it doesn't even do any noticeable amount of damage unlike on the jets where it smokes after getting hit with two or so of them. The one difference that I did notice here with the buzzer though is that the buzzer cannot use its weapons while it's under the EMP effect whereas something like the Sparrow and the other air vehicles can. So there's a big inconsistency there that would be nice if they sorted out if the EMP launcher does apply this effect. 
The other potential EMP that the launcher could use is the one from the UFOs. If you guys remember during the Halloween events, if you were to drive or fly near the UFO, your vehicle would just completely shut off. It was EMP'd for a very long time, enough to completely knock aircraft out of the sky no matter where you were facing. I think it's more likely that they'll just use the EMP mine behavior for the launcher though, but you never know. Rockstar likes to secretly test certain mechanics ahead of time, so it could be possible that the UFO event doubled as a little test for how an EMP would affect the game and how it would go over with players having the entire city filled with UFOs that disabled their vehicle in preparation for adding a weapon like this. Whichever way the EMP works doesn't really matter as much, both the mine version and the UFO version will do their jobs just fine. What's going to be the determining factor is how the weapon delivers that payload. Some people have speculated that it's just going to fire like the compact grenade launcher and shoot EMP grenades instead of explosive grenades. If that is truly the case, then you might as well chalk this for being any sort of use for the players. You absolutely will not be able to hit an oppressor with it. Same for any air vehicle, really. You're not going to be able to hit a jet or a helicopter with the compact grenade launcher, especially if they're moving. In any sort of speeding super or sports car, you could just forget trying to hit that. Isn't the entire purpose for the concept of like an EMP gun to be to non-lethally stop a fast vehicle? Well, if it fires this slow moving arcing projectile, how is that even going to be useful? If this EMP launcher is going to be any sort of use to the players, it could work two ways. The first way it could work is by having a lock on timer like the homing launcher, except maybe a little longer than the homing rocket. And once you do get that full lock on, it fires a hit scan wave that disables the vehicle and applies the EMP effect. And to balance it, it would have much less range than the homing launcher, and with it being a handgun, it should not have insane range to begin with. And it should also operate on a recharge instead of ammo like the up and atomizer and stun gun because it is a futuristic electric weapon. The other way it could work is by having a charge mechanic similar to the Kanjali railgun, except a bit longer of a charge. When the weapon reaches its full charge, you can shoot a hit scan wave that contains a wide hit range because it's a pulse and not a projectile like other weapons that would have to hit a target. This would make it much easier to hit fast moving cars or something like an oppressor mark II, and it would apply the effect that way. It would also have shorter range potentially of the same as an atomizer or maybe a little bit longer range than that. And just like the first concept, it would work on a recharge instead of a regular reload. Both of these concepts prevent you from getting spammed back to back to back by EMP effects. The lock on, you would require a full lock on each time you fire, which would take a few seconds. And the charge concept, you would have to charge it for a few seconds before firing. To give you a scenario of what I mean by you won't be annoyingly spammed, let's say you're on a sidewalk and a player driving a fast moving supercar is zooming down the street. Well, you won't be able to just pull out the EMP launcher and quickly disable his vehicle right in an instant. You would have had to prepare for it before he got there, either by waiting to get a lock on by aiming in his direction or by pre-charging it before he gets to you. Because you don't want some player to just pull out the gun and instantly disable your car when you're just flying by down the street, that would be kind of annoying. I personally like the charge concept because it's void of countermeasures and requires actual aim to hit a target rather than the game targeting for you. Not to mention if you are on the receiving end, there would be no way to tell the difference between an EMP lock and a homing missile lock, which would get annoying as well. I really hope there is some sci-fi sort of way that this weapon works because the design of it is futuristic looking. It's this prototype top secret US government project. It would be really lame if it looked like this and then it just lobbed slow ass grenades out of it. I'm telling you right now, if that's how it works, it will instantly be thrown in the waste of potential trash can along with the Annihilator Stealth, Alkanos, Babushka, Squaddy. Do I even need to go on? Oh yeah, the patrol boat. I think you guys get the idea. But that is going to wrap up this video. Let me know how you think the compact EMP launcher is going to work in the comments. Do you think it'll be garbage or do you think that Rockstar finally took an idea from the community and added a good counter to the Presser Mark II? If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more content of the contract DLC. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.